Good evening. I'm Ed Gargas alongside my good friend Kevin Bishop. We got high school football tonight on Thursday here at Charles Bland Stadium. Dexter High School taking on the farm, or excuse me, the Fredericktown Black Cats for the district championship. Both teams come in 2-0, uh, guaranteed to make the playoffs. Uh, just to, to, go to depend on who's going to be playing at home that uh, next Wednesday and who's going to be playing on the road. But, uh, Kevin, uh, Fredericktown, uh, you know, they play a little north of us, but uh, – Looking over the schedules, they we have four common opponents. In those common opponents, Dexter's four and zero, and Fredericktown is three and one. Uh, Fredericktown's only loss of those common opponents was to St. Genevieve, who, after losing the first week to Dexter, has gone. Uh, I guess they're seven and one now, with their only loss being to the sixth ranked team, sixth ranked team in Class Three A, uh, John Burroughs. So St. Genevieve got it figured out. Uh, they got that spread offense running well. Fredericktown. Also, I read they uh, started out 0-3, uh, went from the power attack to the spread offense, and has continued to improve each and every week. And uh, last week hit on a lot of cylinders. I think 63 points against Kennett. Yep. Looking at the common opponent, common opponents, Ed, they uh, they were. I mean, it was really evenly matched in those games yes. outside of the one loss. And you know, talking to a few people um, that have followed them a little bit, Fredericktown's a lot like the team we had last year. It seems like they yes. peaked at the right time. Uh, playing a lot of good ball. So, I mean, they're going to give Dexter a run for their money tonight. And, you know, with home field advantage on the line, that means a lot and goes a long way. Absolutely, absolutely. And so uh, uh, they, they live and die by their by their line. Yeah. Uh, the offensive line sets it all up. The defensive line keeps them in the game. Yeah. So uh, we'll wait and see what happens this evening because uh, we've seen the Dexter Bearcats play extremely well up front at times this year as well, but also shown some, some, some problems there in a couple of games. Yeah. So we'll see what happens. But, uh, well, Kevin, I'm getting the sign from Tyler. We're going to take a quick break. we got an interview with Coach Pixley. Then we'll be back to talk a little bit about that and get the starting lineups. Again, you're watching uh, High School Football on YHC TV. And we're along with Coach Aaron Pixley of the Dexter Bearcats. And, Coach, you're coming down to your last game of the season here and a chance to cap off one of the finer seasons in Dexter school history tonight with a win against the, Bear against the Black Cats. Yeah, our boys have played well all year. I'll tell you what, this has been one of the uh, – uh, best years to this point as far as just overall football and you know, you know how we've executed and, and uh, uh, you know I mean they've worked hard uh, you know I mean they really want this and and uh, you know I mean they deserve the success they've got and uh, you know they know that this game tonight is going to be a, a very very difficult task and and uh, so hopefully we're up for the challenge and it is the district championship against the Fredericktown Black Cats and it comes down to the two best teams you defeated Kennett New Matter County Central with no problem and they did so as well so it's coming down to the last game of the year the best two teams in the district so you know this is the district championship so uh, you know it's, uh, it's kind of the same uh, look as last year Fredericktown was one of the better teams in the district as well so you're looking at a familiar foe when it comes to the top part of the district so what do you expect out of Fredericktown coming into this game? Well, I mean, every game that we've ever played against Fredertown has been a very physical football game. You know, I mean, they're you know, they're always well coached, and and uh, you know, you know, the games have always been close and, and hard fought, and and uh, uh, so we expect a lot of the same. Uh, they are they've really improved the last four weeks, and they're really on a roll. They're playing their best football right now. Uh, uh, they do uh, seem like they've got the uh, run game and the passing game going on offense, and. And uh, they're very active, and they get after you on defense. So, I mean, they, you know, they're going to try to be very physical up front, and uh, we have to match that. And so, uh, so we expect a very uh, hard-fought football game. All right, and you know, you've you've got some big wins on the year. Of course, you had two big district games, but the Crothersville win, I tell you, that was probably the game of the year, probably for the Southeast Missouri area. And coming coming from behind, like you did against a very talented Crothersville team. I tell you, there's a lot of good things to look back on this season, and you're just improving upon it each week. Uh, yeah, you know, so we should be proud of what we've done, uh, you know, and always remember that and always look back on it. But at the same time, you know, so we, so we still can improve in some areas, and, you know, hopefully we'll continue to do that. And, and uh, But, you know, to this point, uh, so our boys have been outstanding, and, uh, uh, you, know, you know, and I'm very proud of that. You know, I'm proud of the fact that we uh, – Got an elusive conference championship. Uh, you know, it's been a few years since that's happened, and, and uh, uh, so you know, I mean, they played very well, and uh, they know they can play better, and uh, you know, hopefully, we'll come out tonight and do that. Okay, we're looking forward to it. Class three, District one championship, Fredericktown and Dexter. 
And we're back, and there you see uh, the uh, captains out uh, getting ready for the kickoff. Again, the captains for the Dexter Bearcats, number four, Tyler Miller, number seven, Cody Stevens, number 33 is, uh, excuse me, Nick Summers, and 43, Alex Cliff. Uh, they've been the senior captains all year long, and uh, they'll be out there again tonight. So we'll see the flip here in just a minute. Uh, we want to remind you guys or, or tell you guys, Kevin, we got the iPad going and I uh, want to say a quick thanks to New Wave Communications, one for helping bring the football game, but also they uh, installed uh, internet out here in the press box earlier this year. So we got the iPads, the iPhones, we'll all have it, Major League Baseball, ESPN, all that stuff going and we'll be watching the Cardinals to the best of our abilities to try to give everybody an update during the game. With that in mind, Kevin, let's take another quick break. We're going to show you the starting lineups. Cody Stevens, seven, I'm a senior in QB and DB. Josh Overall, number 30, senior, running back, linebacker. Alex Cliff, number 43, senior, running back, linebacker. Tyler Miller, number four, senior, wide receiver, defensive back. Chase Young, number three, junior, wide receiver, defensive back. My name's Jake Lee, number 88, senior, play tight end and defensive end. Jacob Stevens. Number 53, senior, center, defensive tackle. Dylan Aaron, number 52, junior, offensive line and linebacker. Brandon Moore, number 55, senior, right guard, and defensive tackle. Zach Lacey, 78, senior, defensive tackle, offensive tackle. Theo Gall, number 63, senior, left tackle, defensive tackle. Zach Watson, number 44, senior, running back, linebacker. Joseph Lovins, 54, Senior, offense, and defensive line. My name is Jake Lee, number 88, senior, play tight end and defensive end. Chase No, number 50, junior, offense, defensive line. Alex Cliff, number 43, senior, running back, linebacker. Nick Summers, number 33, senior, running back, linebacker. Garrett Ray, number 5, senior, wide receiver, defensive back. Cody Neldon, number 15, sophomore, wide receiver and defensive back. Tyler Miller, number four, senior, wide receiver, defensive back. And we're back and uh, Dexter will be receiving the ball. Uh, you'll see a funny uh, different lineup here for the receiving team. Last week, Fredericktown, after having New Madrid County Central run two back on them two weeks ago, and all everybody in Southeast Missouri knowing about their, the strength of, of Kenneth's return team, they just uh, squib kicked Every kick last week resulting in, I believe, three or four turnovers at Kennett or against Kennett, which allowed them, you know, get those possessions and obviously helped them. They, they, they maximize their opportunities with some scores there. So uh, we did have offsides there on the, on the first attempt here. Uh, they did go ahead and punch it down the field, but a little different scenario than what you see typically on, on a kickoff at, at any level of football. Uh, here from the Fredericktown Black Cats this evening. Especially on your opening kickoff, you know, normally you expect to see that in a close game where an onside kick is yeah. needed, but Coach Pixel has got all his hands up front and he's ready for it. All right, so we're going to try it again. Now we see them in a little more uh, traditional spread out here for the, the kick. And it does kick deep too. Bearcats right up the middle. Josh overall, he breaks through. And there he goes. He's into Fredericktown territory. He is brought down at the Fredericktown 41. So these Dexter Bearcats are going to have excellent field position to start this game. Yeah, Josh just had two guys to beat there and one was able to get his hands on him. Absolutely. So, but uh, hey, Kevin, we're going to remind you tonight's kickoffs brought to you by Rainey Mathis Funeral Homes in Dexter and Bernie. They're dedicated to providing services to the families of Southeast Missouri with care and compassion. They serve every family in our community with great pride. They're able to serve a wide range of services to meet your family needs and customs. They listen to you and your wishes and help plan a celebration consistent with your expectations. Rainy Mathis will take the time to plan every detail and help relieve the burden on your family during your time of loss. Visit Rainy Mathis Funeral Homes online at mathisfuneralhomes.com. And right there, first snap, we got a false start or illegal procedure here at the high school level against the Bearcats, so it'll be first and 15. 
Yeah, just a little excitement on that offensive line. First play of the game, they're ready to fire off and just jumped a little quick. Well, absolutely. And Dexter, I know they're, they're well coached. They're, they're, they know right now that uh, Fredericktown's strength is that defensive as well as offensive line. We talked about it before the game. And so Bearcats are coming out fired up, coming off a, you know, a rematch of last year for the district championship where <coughs> Dexter went up to Farm or Fredericktown, came home a winner 30 to 22 to win that district championship. And you talked a little bit beforehand, Kevin, as well as we see that pass from Cody Stevens incomplete, bringing up a second and 15. But uh, Dexter, a little shaky start last year. They went into the district championships at five and four, uh, went on three games into the playoffs. Uh, this year, Fredericktown coming in at four and five. Maybe a little questionable record, but again, much improving every week. Every week improvement. And so they want to kind of play the spoiler this year. And off the overalls, he goes up the middle for about two. Excuse me, Nick Summers there, Kevin. Looked like number 90, Cody Sullivan, was in on the tackle there for Frederick Town. Hey, we want to remind everybody to break in action. Let us know what you think about the broadcast tonight. Email us at sports at yhctv.com. Kevin, uh, Mike Pearson on the coaching staff at Fredericktown texted me this morning. We talked a little smack here and there, but uh, made sure he let everyone know that the game's on the Internet tonight. And he was going to let the Fredericktown crowd know. Hopefully we have a lot from Fredericktown watching the game as well. It's great pass pursuit there from these Black Cats as Cody Stevens' pass goes a little high, incomplete, bringing up fourth and 13. So uh, started with great field position, but this Bear or Black Cat defense holding firm and uh, resulting in a punting situation for the Bearcats. I don't know how many times I'm going to get Bearcats and Black Cats backwards this yeah. evening, Kevin, so uh, please forgive me, everyone at home. Why don't we just say the cats? Just the cats. <laughs> cats on cats. and Everybody who's rooting for their team, they'll know which one <laughs> it's supposed to be. Tyler Miller with the punt. It's up. Good punt by Miller. As it lands and rolls into the end zone. So uh, got a flag on the play. As I saw uh, Jordan Miller along with uh, – Jake Karokas, I apologize if I mispronounce the name. See what happens here. It's going to be a holding against Fredericktown. So uh, the ball went into the end zone. That make it a touch back to the 20, so it should spot up at about the 10-yard line. Or they, uh, Tyler, looking at Tyler, they're going to spot that from the, mark it off from the spot of the foul. Yes, it should be marked off from the spot of the foul. Okay, so we'll put them at about the four then. Or calling it a five-yard penalty, going to line them up on the six. Dexter actually had a, a chance to down, that, down ball. that ball before it got into the end zone. Just uh, couldn't get their eyes on the ball soon enough. And I believe that was Joe Lovins. I apologize if I'm wrong. I believe it was Joe Ruff Lovins that had the coverage on the ball down deep. Fredericktown lining up in a tight set. It looks like a quarterback keep there. Uh, Jeremy Griminger, he can run and he can throw. I believe last week against Kennedy, he threw for 160 plus yards, ran for 230 something yards, I believe. So, uh, junior quarterback has continued to improve each and every week for these Black Cats, and uh, he's going to be a formidable opponent this evening. Tyler Miller was up in on the tackle there. Same lineup again. So he's going to sneak it around the end. He breaks off. It's outside of the Bearcat or Black Bearcat defense. Scrambles for a first down, but we have another flag on the play after about a 12-yard gain. It's going to be a holding. So that's going to bring that play back. Replay second down. So both offenses kind of struggling just a little bit here. 
in the very wee out minutes of the game. Looks like Frederick Town, the first down to be brought back. It's gonna be about second and eight. Well, they're gonna spread out here, Ed. Yes. Boy, if they, if they can continue to switch in and out, that could cause a lot of problems for this Bearcat defense. There's the spread looking right. Overthrows his receiver. The receiver intended looked to be Justin Sawyer, but the ball sailed high. Number five, Garrett Ray for the Bearcats on the defense, but a little slow reacting to the pass and unable to get there for an interception, which would have been, you know, he could have almost Most likely six into points, the pick yeah. six there. Garrett Ray's one that's really come on strong defensively. I thought as the years come, you know, kind of move through. Absolutely, Dalton Putnam not able to play as he's still kind of nursing his foot injury from three weeks ago. But Garrett, good eyes on the quarterback, saw the pass but just couldn't speed up. But here we're going deep over top. Intercepted, Intercepted Cody by Nelden Cody Nelton, the sophomore. Stepping in there for Dalton Putnam tonight with a great leaping catch up underneath the receiver. Outstanding reception there, interception by Cody Nelton. And so the Bearcats are gonna take over at the Fredericktown 38 yard line. Cody doing exactly what you teach your defensive backs to do there. He's seen the receiver turn and look. He turned, went for the ball at its highest point and an outstanding interception. Josh Overall in the backfield with Cody Stevens. Cody gonna keep it himself. Cody Stevens, a Dexter quarterback, over a thousand yards in the air and over a thousand yards on the ground this year, Kevin. Cody's having an outstanding senior year. Um, I understand, I think he may be nominated for the MVP for the SEMO Conference. The Car Conference. Award. Yeah. And I believe the fans can go out there and vote for him as well. So if you get a chance, check that out. Second and nine. As he goes up over top to Tyler Miller. Tyler, touchdown. Tyler Miller has been his favorite receiver all year. Not sure, uh, Tyler now has, I forget what it is exactly. I think maybe about 14 TDs on the year. We just picked up another one there and another 38 yards to add to the yardage total. That's so fuzzy, I can't see shit. Looks like Dexter's gonna kick the extra point here. Alex, Alex Clift attempting the point after here. Ball's down, kicks up, and it is good. So with 9.17 to go here in the first quarter, Bearcats strike first and lead seven to nothing. Hey, Kevin, De Dexter Pizza Company now under new ownership and have returned to the classic recipes. A lunch buffet is available daily along with the popular cookie dough pizza and now offering chicken wings. Dexter Pizza Company is offering a carryout special for Bearcat fans during each YHC televised game. That special is free breadsticks with a purchase of a large pizza. Call... 624-7499 to order or visit them on Business 60. And also, Kevin, now they offer a free drink with buffet on Sundays if you bring and show your church bulletin from today's those that day's services. So, uh, again, Dexter on time, striking, striking first, because we've seen them do a lot this year. And... Uh, they play much better with the lead, as we've yes. seen throughout the season. Momentum's been the key for Dexter all year long. I mean, once they've gotten that momentum, it seems like they've held on to it. Deep kick by Alex. So he breaks free outside, and he's brought down by Alex Cliff. So a nice return there by the Black Cats. They'll take over at their own 40, 
So just outside their 40 yard line. Great return by Fredericktown, but Dexter, we had a few missed tackles on some initial contact. Frederick Town spreading it out again. A nice run by the quarterback as he breaks free, breaks a couple of tackles, and he's going to go for about a 34 yards. And a first down, obviously, for the Frederick Town Blackcats. Nick Summers was in on that tackle, and he had to come clear across the field. He was actually playing outside linebacker on the opposite side of the play. So nice. Nice hustle play by Nick there, possibly saving the touchdown. Looks like Frederick Town's gonna be about 27 yards out. Nice run there as he's helped stopped about four yards, but uh, kept those legs driving, grounded out another couple of yards. Zach Watson wrapped him up, but he actually carried Zach another two yards, I believe. Never stopped moving. Kevin glancing at the roster for the Black Cats. See a lot of juniors and a lot of sophomores. So uh, they're they're going to be should be poised for a great season again next year. Second and six. Five. Looking deep. Nobody open. Quarterback runs out on the outside. He gets hammered just short of the first down. That looked like he was brought down at about the 20. Joseph Lovins doing a good job of pursuing the quarterback. Set up the tackle by Ryan Joyner. Be third and about four for Frederick Town. They're spreading it out once again. Quarterback's going to keep it. He's going to be close to the first down. We'll see where he gets the spot. Jacob Lee making a good tackle there up the middle, but nonetheless, Frederick Town picks up the first down. Kevin, real quick, we got Texas on top in the first, one to nothing with one out and two on. Game yeah. six of the World yeah. Series. You hope the Cardinals don't dig a hole tonight. Absolutely. First down, he rolls out. He's got one deep in the, in the end zone. Tipped away at the last minute by Garrett Ray. Pass intended for Brian Barks. And it looked like there, uh, Kevin, and again, I'm just an innocent bystander from the press box here, but um, had his receiver open, took a couple more steps to get himself set, and, that, and when he threw the ball, that allowed Garrett Ray to close in on that pass. Uh, now you're exactly been, right. The Dexter defense was full just long enough had he been able to get set, possible touchdown there. Fake the handoff, quarterback, quarterback keep. keeps it. He goes off tackle back up inside. He's gonna get about three. This He's right by, up by a host of Bearcats. Look like Nick Summers and Jake Lee making the initial contact. It's like Alex Cliff coming out of the game as Joseph Lovins checks in for him on the defensive line. I think that was Jonathan Page, oh. 42. Okay, my apologies. As I see Alice Cliff still in the middle linebacker <laughs> position out there. <laughs> and again, this time, hands off. Nice run up the middle. Looks like that's Roddy Roberts from Fredericktown, if I'm saying that correctly. He runs the ball hard every time the ball's been in his hands tonight, just pushing through. 
was the big fourth down for Fredericktown Dexter. Big fourth down for yes. Dexter as well, Ed, I mean. A absolutely, absolutely. Fourth and one uh, from about the uh, eight-yard line, six-yard line, excuse me. Got them spread out, trips to the near side here. Low snap, quarterback keeps it. He's caught at the line. Oh, Bumble. ball loose. Going to be recovered by Fredericktown. Not sure where they'll mark the ball. But uh, Dexter seems to be signaling that he's going to say a recovery short of the first, and it yeah. is. So recover by Fredericktown, but behind the first down marker, so it'll be a turnover on downs to the Dexter Bearcats, and they'll start from deep in their own territory at their six-yard line with 5.34 to go here in the first quarter. Big stop there by the Dexter defense. Not sure who made the contact, but you can see the way the ball flew out. Somebody put a helmet on the ball, popped up in the air, and here yeah, we go, trying to go 95, 92 yards, I guess. Griminger trying to ground out and make sure he had enough for that first down as he was hit by about three Bearcats. And as he kind of grinded out the extra yard, that next hit came in, and there went the ball. So. Uh, Hand off up the middle to Josh Overall. He's met instantly. And uh, so he's short gain, maybe a yard. And Adam Blue met him in the hole there and popped him pretty good. Good tackle. Nick Summer's going to bring in the play for the Bearcats. And at the middle of the first, Texas Rangers on top of the St. Louis Cardinals, one to nothing. Cody rolls to the right, looks back left, cuts across the green. He's got a lot of space to run as he's got the first down. Shakes a tackle at the 30, he's got two to beat. One blocker, he cuts back in. He stays on his feet and he's finally brought down at the Fredericktown 38 yard line. So. Uh, 44, 12, so about a 56-yard run for Cody Stevens for the Bearcats. Cody just continuing to add to that yardage that he's been able to put up all year long. Absolutely, and he does a great job he, of selling the offense moving to one side of the field or the other. Then he has great eyes and vision. is able to cut back against the grain, and so he's really running behind all the defenders by the time they get spun around and chase him down with the angle he's halfway down the field great pursuit there number 62 Austin Smith was in the backfield about the same time Josh over I got the ball yeah, so great explosion off the defensive end position there for Fredericktown yeah, Josh didn't have a chance on that play. I mean, just just because he was looking up, he had somebody on him. But Josh did a good job of trying to fight him off. You know, just this morning, Kevin, uh, talk about how quickly he was into the in the backfield. Saw a, a video on YouTube of, of a deep high school defensive end who actually intercepted the field goal attempt and ran it in. So, to, I mean. <laughs> I don't even know how that's possible. Yeah, a pass out to Nick Summers. He's got some space. He's back to the line of scrimmage. Hard hit, but brought down by number 48, Jake Karokas. After a gain of about 14, well, no, excuse me, that's going to be seven, five, about 12-yard gain. So it'll be third and seven. See what the scoreboard puts up for us, uh, Kevin. Third and six. Right. Third and six. Nick was putting his shoulder down, looking for the contact. Nick uh, got, a, got a little speed back there, but is not afraid to put the pop on somebody. Yeah, really and, uh, you go player. to tackle him, you're going to know you've been tackled or you, that you tackled somebody. This time, Josh Overall met at the line of scrimmage. Overall, it's a great there, there job. Uh, number 50, uh, Reed Jensen. Uh, Fill and plug in that hole for the Batcats. It looks like the Dexter offense is going to stay on the field here, Ed, on fourth down. Coach Pixley confident in what his offense can do here. Well, and you look at it, 
Tyler Miller has the ability to punt it into the end zone. If he doesn't kick it out of bounds low, it comes out to the 20, and you really only gained about 15 yards. And now we got an encroachment by the Fredericktown, so that's going to add five yards to it. Still going to be about three yards short of the first down, but it certainly gives Coach Pixley a lot more options to call on a third and short. As he's talking now with his senior Tyler Miller, and quarterback Cody Stevens comes over to get the play as well. We've seen Cody do the hard count numerous times this year, Kevin, and uh, proven to be successful again. So next, they're gonna light up with Tyler wide right. Cody doing a nice job of picking up the first down there, squeezing through a seam. So Dexter's going to be on about the 23-yard line, first down. Alex Cliff bringing in the play to Cody Stevens. So the Cardinals got a runner on base, one out, bottom of the second. Now Albert Pujols coming up the bat, Kevin. Pujols is due to, to have a big hit in the clutch situation. Cody Stevens fakes the handoff. He passes it out. Complete. Chase Young breaks the tackle, stays on his feet, cuts back across the middle, runs into Tyler Miller, and, and he is in just shy of the touchdown. He is at the goal line. So first and goal, great reception uh, by Chase. Even better run after the catch. And uh, short of uh, Tyler Miller and, and being at there, the wrong place, wrong time there. As Tyler was trying to clear out, and uh, Chase comes up just inches shy of a touchdown there. All right, Tyler out there really doing exactly what you want your receiver Absolutely. to do, set, trying to set up a block, and the play just all ended up in one spot. Well, yeah, when Chase cut back across the grain, back into the middle of the field, here we go, and we got a whistle. Timeout, Dexter. So with that, Kevin, we're going to take a quick break. You're watching High School Football Live on YAV. Baker Implement Company in Malden, Missouri, is your authorized dealer for Case IH tractors, combines, and implements. We are also an authorized dealer for Lexion combines. Baker Implement offers service on what we sell by factory-trained technicians. We are also one of the best stock hardware stores in the area. Baker Implement is the place to shop for Case IH branded apparel and toys. Drop by and visit us and let us show you what we have. You'll find whatever you're looking for at Baker Implement Company in Malden, Missouri. At Allen, Christian & Dexter, you'll like the way we do business for many reasons. We make the buying experience simple with a large selection of Buicks and GMCs to choose from. We offer quality pre-owned vehicles priced to fit any budget. No gimmicks. Guaranteed. Shop back and we're back Kevin and uh real quick Cardinals lead two to one Lance Berkman hit just hit a home run here's the handoff inside to Alex Cliff he trudges into the end zone so touchdown Dexter 133 to go here in the first quarter Dexter on top by two touchdowns now as Alex Cliff will be in for the kick Alex plays that fullback position exactly how you would want him to not selfish you know, good on short yard carries. We'll set the blocks up for yep. Nick, Cody, and Josh. So, absolutely. So, great execution again by this Dexter offense early in the game. Oh, they. And there goes Cody in, reaches, got to be short. Point after attempt, no good. So, the point after attempt, no good as they try to get two. Not sure if the snap was high or fumbled there, but Cody did the most he could with it, trying to get it in. Kevin, as we watch for the uh, kick to be reset, we want to remind everybody winning on the football field doesn't happen by accident. Players and coaches work throughout the long summer, conditioning for the rigors of competition. Practice upon practice, the lessons learned by our Dexter student athletes will, however, serve them well for a lifetime. Lessons of discipline and teamwork, hard work and commitment to excellence. 
At Bank of Advance, we believe in the character that sports helps to build, and we're proud to help support athletes on the field and in the classroom. Bank of Advance, where a handshake still matters. Member FDIC and equal housing lender. Well, with a minute 33 to go, I don't believe Dexter could have had much better of a start outside of that first series. They've looked really good. And Matt Holiday just walked, so 2-1 uh, Cardinals, man on first, and Dave Freeze at back. If in for the kick. Ball's up, it's gonna be retrieved by Justin Sawyer. He goes right up the middle, but he's met by Josh Overall, and brought down at about the farming of Fredericktown 29 yard line. He is brought down by that funding Josh Overall. Maybe the 28. So great coverage there by Josh Overall, just running right up the middle of the of the wedge. Josh really having a memorable senior year as well, Ed. I mean running the ball, playing good defense, just uh Real close to, I think, 869 yards on the ground this year and a lot of touchdowns, so quarterback keeper again. Uh, right up the middle off that tackle. And, uh, excuse me, right over the guard. He's got a gain of about six. Brought down by Joseph Lovins, number 54 for the Bearcats. So one minute to go here in the first quarter. Bearcats on top, 13 to nothing. You see the score right across the top of your screen. And up this time, fumble, oh, ball ball's the on the ground. Looks to be Next recovered by the Bearcats. Nick Summers with the recovery. So uh, with just under a minute to go here in the first quarter, second turnover of the night for the Farmington Black Cats. The Baxter Bearcats are gonna start another first down here inside Black Cat territory at about the 36 yard, 38 yard line. Looked like Roberts just didn't have it tucked well and lost it as he went to the ground. So at the bottom of the first, it's two to one Cardinals. As Napoli, Gentry, and Lewis are due up for the Rangers. Napoli. Napoli, excuse me. I knew that. Okay. But thanks, Rick. Uh, and off to Josh. He's first one tackler, but he's met by number 48 for these black cats. Oh, That's Jake Karokas, who we have said his name three or four times already, Kevin. Yeah, and it looks like a difference in where the officials are wanting to spot. Yeah, okay. They are going to give him the forward progress there. Yes. You know, the rain delay, I think, is actually going to work out better for the Cardinals if they can win tonight. Gives Carpenter another day to rest. So, If they choose to use him more. You know, the, the Gotta win said Loesch was still on the list, so we'll see what happens. But absolutely, first thing is to get there tomorrow night. And Stevens going up top. Intended for Jake Lee. Tripped up, but it looked like it was incidental. Uh, feet just got tied up when at the end of the first quarter, Dexter Bearcats on top, 13 to nothing. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back. You're watching High School Football Live on YAC TV. At Allen, Christian, and Dexter, you'll like the way we do business for many reasons. We make the buying experience simple with a large selection of Buicks and GMCs to choose from. We offer quality pre-owned vehicles priced to fit any budget. No gimmicks, guaranteed. Shop us any day, any time, here in Dexter or online at allenchristian.com. We service what we sell with one of the most experienced service departments in the Heartland area. Selection, price, experience, family owned for over 53 years. Allen, Christian, Buick, GMC, Dexter. At First National Bank, it is about believing in our community, planning for the future, and understanding the needs and aspirations of our customers. We bring you the best in full-service banking, backed by a friendly staff and a strong sense of community pride. We encourage you to experience the First National Bank difference. First National Bank, believing in community, planning for the future. And we're back. Coach Pixley getting final comments in for his Bearcats. Go, 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 
trying to see if we can't get some other scores from district play tonight. We'll be trying to track the uh, Park Hills Central St. Genevieve game. Uh, also uh, tracking the Frederick or Farmington Sykeston game, but we just saw the ticker there at the bottom of the screen. Let us know what you think about the broadcast. Email us at sportsyactv.com. And what an awesome catch there by Tyler Miller. Tyler Cody Steven gets it out in front a little bit and down low, and Tyler Miller dies out there for the catch. <laughs> Cody put that ball in a spot where nobody was going to catch it but Tyler. And he did just that. So a great catch, first down at the 25-yard line for the Bearcats. If you're just tuning in tonight, Tyler Miller scored on about a 38-yard touchdown, and then Alex Cliff punching it in from the one on the second score. And we're going to have an illegal procedure call, I believe, against the Bearcats. And yes, it is. So that's going to back them up five yards. Kevin, our good friend Brett Dorton just brought us some stats from the first quarter. I'll have to pass those off to you. And in between plays, I'm sure you'll give us some highlights there. Two outs, top of the first or top of the second for the Rangers. Nobody on. So second and fifth or first and fifteen. Josh over on the backfield. We got our whistles again. See what the call is this time. Offsides on the offense. Offsides on the offense. That's a, a call that you rarely get. Whoops. Offsides on the defense. So oh, he okay. corrected his <laughs> corrected it, his call. He yeah. initially said to the Dexter, but moved it. A lot of times you see that defense lines up in the neutral zone. And uh, so now we have back to first and ten. Third play of the series since the first down. Next, are going to line up in the trips to the left here again, Ed, with an Alex Cliff out to the right. Jake Lee. Awesome. And so I've got Alex on the brain tonight, I guess, yes, the second time. Nick Summers been. slips as he gets the ball and, uh, in the backfield. Great pursuit there again by the Black Cats. And so bringing up now second. And 15. Yeah, you can tell the Black Cats have probably seen that sweep in practice this week. I mean, they've, <laughs> they've met it head on twice and read it perfectly. <laughs> Stevens back to pass. He looks to... By some time, now he turns it up, feels he has some space. Tries to hurdle the defender, brought down by number 21, Zach Proffer for the Black Cats, but not until after a first down. It's going to be first and 10 at about the uh, Black Cat 11 yard line. So uh, Napoli is on first base, so two outs. Gentry at bat. Before that run there, Cody at 61 yards for the night, you know, with that including the big 40, 50 yard run earlier in the first quarter. Nick Summers in the back, he gets the pitch out. He's got a lot of space. Can't... And then he's brought down by number 24. Justin Sawyer goes low and gets him down by the knees and a good hard run by Nick for about four yards. Just, Just great open field tackle. Absolutely. St. Jim leads Park Hill 16 to 7. Just, just overheard uh, the press box below us saying St. Jim leads Park Hills 15 to 7. Cody's bounce off to their out. He drags him in. And he's in for a touchdown. So touchdown, Dexter. Now uh, 19 to nothing with 9.21 to go here in the first half. Night, you know, Cody didn't have it off tackle, bounced outside around the end. There you see, and he just carries three guys, or three black cats into the end zone with him. And those of you wondering may, why we're giving an update on the St. Jim Park Hills game is because the winner of this game will face the loser of that game and have home field advantage and then vice versa. 
Absolutely. So, uh, yeah, Park Hill St. Jim both playing for district championship tonight also. Pass inside to Chase Young. He finds some green space and gets into the end zone for the two-point conversion. So uh, he kind of pushed down there deep in the end zone, but uh, no flag on the call. But the, here's the replay. Good, good read there by Chase. So uh, now with the 9.21 to go here in the first half, Bearcats on top by 21. Right now at Pizza Hut in Dexter, get any pizza, any size, any toppings for only $10 when you place a carry-out order or a $5 pizzone, a huge individual calzone stuffed with your favorite toppings and cheese for only $5. Choose from three recipes, meaty, pepperoni, and supreme. Pizza Hut is open until midnight, Fridays and Saturdays. Opens at 11 each day. Give them a call at 624-5333. Really, you know, with the score being 13 to nothing at the end of the first quarter, as far as yardage goes and production, really close first half. I mean, Dexter, you know, had 131 to uh, Fredericktown 74 yards, but you know, he had Cody Stevens' big run in there as well. So, really close first half as far as yardage. Kick is up. It's, we got a whistle. Probably going to be an offsides on the kick from where the flag was thrown right on the line there, and it is a illegal procedure or against the Bearcats, so I believe that is somebody stepping over the line before the kick. Well, three scores on the board tonight and three different Bearcats in the end zone, Ed. Spreading it out on senior night. Of course, Chase Young being a junior. Yeah. So now two outs, top of the second. Gentry's on second. And Kinsler is at bat. Counts two and two. Go Frederick Town with an opportunity to maybe get a little better field position here. And Justin Sawyer with the reception and the return. It's, uh, he saw number 44 Zach Watson coming and uh, he tried to get a little lower but the only place lower to go was straight down on the ground so uh, nice reception nice return there by uh, Justin Sawyer for the Bearcat or Black Cats of about 15 maybe yeah about 15 yards on the return and good pursuit there by uh, Zach Watson yeah, Zach Watson meant business when he was going in for that tackle head First and 10 from the 32-yard uh, line, 31-yard line of the Black Cats. Handoff met by the entire offensive line and a couple of linebackers uh, at the line of scrimmage. We'll see where they stop the forward momentum as they threw him back for about a, about 10 yards behind the line of scrimmage, but it looks like they're going to stop it right at the line of scrimmage, maybe give him a, yard, a foot on the momentum. Both quarterbacks tonight kind of anchoring the ground game for both teams. Frederick Town's Jeremy uh, Griminger, I guess if I'm saying Griminger. that correctly. 60 yards um, according to the first quarter stats. Like we said early, Cody Stevens was at 61 yards. And quick pass out to the flat, incomplete. We bring up the third down. And uh, Kinsler just hit a ground rule double. So uh, that scores Gentry, tie, scores now tied two to two with Kinsler on second, two outs at the top of the second. Game six of the World Series. Game six. Not that I felt I needed to say that, as everybody kind of <laughs> knows what baseball game is on right now. <laughs> There's only one on right now. <laughs> exactly, as Rick so eloquently put out. Yeah. <laughs> There's only one baseball game. Hopefully there'll be one tomorrow night. Grimminger looks, he scrambles, he has some space. He's in pursuit, Nick Summers 
Brings him down out of bounds, but it looks like he's going to be just short of the first down. See out of bounds at the 40-yard line to bring up fourth down in about two. See what Fredericktown has in mind, a short yardage, but still in their on their half of the field. You know, a huge stop, Kevin, those just turning in. Dexter Bearcats had a huge stop uh, on Black Cat's second possession at the six-yard line, just inches shy of a first down, resulting in, ultimately resulting in a 96-yard touchdown drive. Black Cat's with the punt. Oh, it's short a short kick. high kick. And there you like to keep your uh, the black shirts away from that, but uh, ball's down at about the uh, – Bearcat 42, so uh, about a 16 yard net gain on that punt for the Black Cats. So with eight minutes, 10 seconds to go here in the first half, Black Bearcats will start with the ball again. Kev on the go convenience has two locations, Dexter and Bloomfield serving fried chicken and barbecue daily along with their popular food bar. It's also your one stop for fuel, snacks and cold drinks on the go and featuring the 28 degree cave. That's on the goal convenience. Eye formation this time. Oh. Josh Overall, we fumble on the snap. And it looks like, we'll see Farming, or Fredericktown does recover. So uh, after the punt, one down, and now it's uh, Fredericktown with the ball at the Bearcat 39. So 8.05 to go, a little momentum change here. And uh, first turnover for the Bearcats this evening. Yeah, Cody never had possession of that ball, I don't believe. You can tell by the way he was looking straight down. That Fredericktown defensive line just coming through, and he's unable to get a hold of it. Quick pitch to the flat. Out the top. <laughs> Brought down by a number 10, Ryan Joyner immediately, but the reception to uh, Justin Sawyer. I, I believe every name I've called for the uh, Fredericktown Black Cats has been a junior. Yes. So uh, they're, they're you know, like you starting said, the season yeah. with a lot of inexperience, but as we talked about earlier in the game, kept getting better and better each and every week, and they're going to be poised to make, make a strong run next year. Yeah. With a lot of senior leadership. Second and nine. Pass. Ramager's going to hang on to it. Gets a block. There's a flag on the play. Where it was thrown, Kev? Sometimes shows to be a block in the back. Maybe a possible hold as well. Yeah, it looked like number 70 might have hold a, had a hold of our jersey. But Grimager with good vision of the field got outside and is a block in the. It is. As he signals and gets it, gets it straight between his two linemen there. Okay, middle of the second, 2-2, two, two. holding, or excuse me, blocking the back against the Bearcats. So add some yardage on, and that'll be ensure the first down. But it looks like where they had the ball spotted at the moment, it would be a first down anyway. But middle of the second, 2-2, two to two, game six of the World Series. And that's going to move the chains. They'll spot the ball now inside the 25-yard line at about the 24 of the Dexter Bearcats. 7.16 to go here in the first half. Fredericktown hoping to key on our turnover just as we keyed on both of their turnovers earlier in the game. Absolutely. Drifts here to the near side. Handoff. Zach Proffer. But we got a fumble recovered by the Bearcats. So a uh, little tit for tat there, Kevin. Uh, three plays later. And um, after uh, Bearcats fumbled, a, a great run by the quarterback, plus the yardage on the penalty for a first down. And then they. Oh. 
All right, so uh, got John Banking up here in the press box delivering some hot chocolate to Thank everyone John. tonight. Thank you very much, John. I'm sure he's going to have some uh, hickory log ribs down, downstairs at halftime as well. All right, we got Chase Young to the near side. Josh over in the backfield. Alex Cliff leading it out. Cody kept it, so he's got two. Josh on the butt, up the sideline. Brought down by number 21, Zach Proffer of the Black Cats at the 45 yard line of Fredericktown. So about a 35 yard run, 34 yard run by Cody Stevens. That should be enough there to put Cody over the century mark for the night. And we're still in the first half, so he's looking to put up some big numbers tonight. He and Josh Overall did such a wonderful job selling that handoff. And then uh, Cody kept it, tucked back in line, had Alex Cliff and Josh Overall out front, both of them doing what they're supposed to do, block that lead guy. And uh, Cody was able to spring free here on the near sideline. This and time to Alex Cliff. Up the middle, crosses the 45-yard line. Going to be down at about the 44. Six eighteen to go here in the first half, Kevin. Bearcats on top, twenty one nothing. Tyler Miller cutting across the side, complete. Brought down immediately by uh, number 24, Justin Sawyer, but not until after a gain of uh, about 20, 21 yards. So great reception there by Tyler as he went high for the for the catch and the receiver or the defender just right there on him, bringing him down as soon as his feet touched the ground. That's going to put Tyler at two receptions tonight with close to around 60 to 65 yards here in the first half. Just got an update from the Sykes and Farmington game. Sykes or Farmington up 21 to seven. Seems to be uh, Sykes and struggling defending the passing game of the Knights. And so there, Nick Summers with the carry and carries the ball four. and three Farmington guys <laughs> and finally comes down after a one yard gain, bringing up second and nine. going to be second and 10 here for the Bearcats with 5.14 to go here in the second quarter. Roll to the sets. Goes to Jake Lee. Broke it up. Nice the defense there by number eight. Or number nine, excuse me. That was Patrick Klein for the uh, Black Cats on the defense. Patrick did a nice job there defending that. I mean, he was couldn't intercept it, so he made sure the ball was knocked to the ground. Two outs, bottom of the second, nobody on. Garcia at bat now, Kevin. Still 2-2. Two, two. Two. Third and nine from the Black Cat 24 yard line. Make the handoff to overall. We got a flag on the play as Stevens rolls out. He cuts up, keeps it, turns the corner. Thrown out of bounds by number 48, Jake Karokas for the Black Cats. And the penalty holding against the Bearcats. We'll see if uh, they decline to ring up a fourth and six or if they take it. Looked like it might have been Josh Lacey on that hold. He'd done a fine job all year of blocking up front. Exactly. Just tried to put a look. Did I say Zach or Josh? Excuse me again, Zach uh -huh. Lacey. <laughs> he probably prefer that we not get the name right on that <laughs> call, but uh, yeah. well, he's done a fine job. He just he was trying job. to give a little extra effort there and got called for the hold. Absolutely. So they do take the yardage, and so it's going to bring up third and 19 from the Black Cat 38 yard line. 
Third and 25, excuse me. Got a long third down here. And another flag on the play. We got the uh, visiting team coaches and uh, film crew up here next to us. We heard them saying something about movement, so uh, I'm going to assume they were saying it was against Dexter. If we see it there, illegal procedure against the Bearcats. Got to back them up another five yards to the uh, Black Cat 44-yard line. The first down marker, for those who can't see it out of camera angle, is at the 14-yard uh, line <laughs> of the Black Cat. So four, third and 30. 4.30 to go here in the second quarter. Cody going deep to Tyler Miller. He's down there. Comes back in with the reception. Dies for the end zone. Going to be just short at the two-yard line. So great concentration. Good defense by the Black Cats. Tyler able to kind of stop and come back for the balls. We'll see it right here on your replay. There he comes right back. Just can't quite reach out over the goal line, so brings up first and goal for the Black Cats. Yeah, this Dexter Bearcat football team is definitely going to miss the hands of Tyler Miller next year as he graduates. He's a senior. Have an outstanding senior year and an outstanding game tonight. <laughs> Just got an email from Debbie Stidham. She and Mark are enjoying the game. So appreciate you guys watching. Touchdown Bearcats. So with 3.54 to go here in the first half, Bearcats now on top by four touchdowns. If I know Mark Stidham as well as I think I do, he's probably taking some shots at me out there right now. Well, they're also watching the Cardinal game tonight. I told Debbie make sure Mark pulls a second TV uh, in there so they can see both of them. So here we go. We're going to ask Cliff him getting the kick and shoe on. Ball's down, kick is up. And it is good. So with 3.54 to go here in the first half, Bearcats now on top, 28 to 0. Hey, and as you take a look at the field tonight, uh, you should be impressed that it's in great condition thanks to turf renovations. Turf renovations is responsible for outstanding field surfaces on not only this field, but numerous ones in the area such as Portageville, Sykeston, Pickett, and other baseball fields as well. Turf renovations prides themselves on providing the best playing surface possible for the area's athletes. Special thanks to Turf Renovations and to check out their projects, go to turfrenovations.com. Hey, and there we see the uh, Bearcat at the 50-yard line, again, provided by the Dexter Bear Booster Club. As we get some looks at the sidelines, too, you'll see the watering station, or the water station, also provided by the Bearcat Booster Club. You look into the end zone, you see the Bearcat prints in front of the end of the goal post, as well as DHS painted in both end zones. So uh, Bearcats, and again, Kevin, you've talked to us about that before. Dana Adams talked to us. It's not just about football and athletics. Uh, they do a lot of other things throughout the, all classrooms and in curriculum for the high school or, or for the school system. Yeah, you're exactly right. Kim Booster Slow. Club giving back nearly 20 grand to the school last year. Picked up by Bar Barks. He's surrounded instantly, but he keeps trudging out. He's going to get about six yards on the return. Now into the top of the third with Hamilton at bat. Counts two and two, still two two. Right, 
Griminger. And Chris Roddy rolls to his right. He cuts back up against the green. Oh, cut there. He's at the first down, crosses the 50, wrestled out of bounds by Garrett Ray. We got a flag on the play, Ed. Not sure what the call may be. Personal foul, face mask, goes against Dexter. That'll add 15 yards to a nice run there by Griminger. It's kind of cut back across that grain. So Frederick Town gonna have a a good chance to punch the ball into the end zone right here before we get to the end of the half. Absolutely, and that's exactly what they need is they're going to receive the ball coming into the second half, coming out for the second half. They could punch one in here and get a little momentum going into the locker room. That'd be great. Lovins with the, the rush, ran right past the quarterback. Grimminger tries to break free, but Lovins – Tribute to the young man. He kept turned around, turned it on, and brought him down from behind after a gain of about three. So it'll be second and seven for the Black Cats at about the 28-yard line of the Bearcats. Yeah, Lovins did a good job of staying alive there. A lot of times when you see a defensive lineman explode through and they miss that quarterback, there's that moment of hesitation, and he never had that, just turned up after the ball. Clock ticks down below three minutes now. Grimger looking to pass. Again, he's going to keep it. Goes to the outside, gets to the sideline. Knocked out of bounds by Garrett Ray. But after, not until after he gets a first down as he's just inside the 20-yard line at about the 19 of the Bearcats. So Fred, or Farmington getting their stride on now. They, they, they're having that success, especially the quarterback, getting the momentum and the offense running to one side of the field. And he's been able to cut back against the green. Griminger single-handedly single put it on the Bearcats so far tonight. We've done a good job of stopping everything else. Hand off there to number 21, Zach Proffer. He scrambles for about seven, maybe eight. As he's brought down at about the 11. And number five, Garrett Ray in on that tackle. So he got his gain of nine, bring up second and one. And we have a timeout, Dexter. So with that timeout, we're going to kick it back to the station. You're watching High School Football Live on YAC TV. Hello, I'm Dr. Terry Swinger, and I'm so pleased that YAC TV will be carrying so many sporting events this year, both boys and girls. These events help with leadership uh, personality development, and I would like to wish all of our students and all of our schools a safe and successful year. People come from everywhere to get their deal from Lincoln Lacey. They come from Pitt, Blueville, Orrin, from New Madrid, Bertrand, Campbell, Parma, Kelso, Lilburn, Portageville, Risco, Bernie. Lincoln Lacey is your domestic auto needs headquarters. From Rector, Arkansas, Giddy, and Sykes, Head in Arkansas. Morehouse, Dexter, Minor, East Prairie, Charleston, Chappie, Holland, Arkansas. Come on out to Lincoln Lacey in Malden. And we're back. Again, 2.16 to go here in the first half. Fredertown Black Cats marching down the field now at the 10-yard uh, line. Second and one. Grimminger keeps it, calls his own number. He's bet, brought down for a loss of about two. Great play there, Nick Summers and Jake Lee. So it looks like they're going to spot him at his four momentum. So uh, at about the eight-yard line, or excuse me, the 11. So brings up third and three. You mentioned it, mentioned it earlier, Ed, but Dexter having a big stop in the first quarter. Um, down on the goal line, looking to do it again as it's third and about three here. 144 to go here in the first half. Is uh spreads the receivers to the right, looks right, looks right, 
Tries to cut back, cuts up the middle. Met at the 10 yard line. We'll see where the ball is spotted. He's gonna be right at the first down marker. It's gonna be close. And it looks like he is gonna be good for the first down as they spot him up inside the nine. First so down. Signal there, first down. 131 to go here in the first half. First down and goal for the Fredericktown Black Cats. This would be a big score for Fredericktown. Like you said earlier, they get to receive the ball after the half. So putting one in here and giving yourself a chance to be two touchdowns out of the game. Absolutely. High oh, snap, snap gets away from the quarterback. Able to scoop it up. Pitches downfield, complete to number one at about the six, maybe seven yard line. Some great reception there by Bryant Barks, but good heads up play by the quarterback. And now we have another timeout on the field. Dexter, 102 to go. So with that timeout, we're gonna take another break. You're watching High School Football Live on YAC TV. When you need home medical equipment, get a higher grade of home care with A-Plus Medical. At A-Plus Medical, our goal is to provide a wide selection of quality products and a higher grade of customer care, from grab bars to beds. And we're back. Again, 102 to go here in the first half. Second down and goal. Griminger back to pass behind the receiver, but as Griminger got hit right as he Grimminger threw it, as he was being, as uh, Ryan Joyner was closing in quickly. Yeah, Ryan making a big hit there. I mean, catching him from the blind side. Those are the kind that you feel the next morning. Absolutely. You almost feel them right now, yeah. but <laughs> when you get as old as I am, <laughs> ouch. But uh, third down and goal, again, from the uh, Scoreboard says six. From our angle, looks close, closer to the seven. Yeah. Fred Zach Crawford in the backfield. Grimminger rolls to his left, shakes a tackle. He's hit by two, and he's brought down by number 44, Zach Watson of the Bearcats. 49 seconds to go, and with that, we're going to have a timeout on the field. This time, Fredericktown. It looks like Fredericktown's just a couple of key blocks from opening up some big holes. Hey, let us know what you think about the ball game. Shoot us an email, sports at yhctv.com. We'd love to hear from you. We'll give you a shout out, anything appropriate. We called it earlier, Kevin. It's John Banker from Hickory Log just come up the stairs, and uh, he's got some fresh ribs right there in the tray for him. So he's going to be a welcome sight, that's for sure. Appreciate that, John. Hickory Log, they're so great to bring food here, but also, you know, Fiddler's has done it. Uh, Pizza Hut uh, provides meals, uh, you know, a halftime snack for those in the press box and out on the officiating crew, or at least the line and game crew uh, during the game. So uh, thank you very much for the fine supporters, the local restaurants here at Dexter. So big fourth down here, Ed, with 49 seconds left to go in the half. Fakes the pitch to the backfield. Looking to go. Wrapped up, and he's going to be brought down at about the five-yard line. Quarterback is, so that's going to be a turnover and downs as the Dexter defense steps up to the task for the second time tonight. Deep Very in their own territory. Hold it, getting the turnover on downs. The Dexter defense just looking 
looking very disciplined there and staying at home. Looked like Fredericktown was trying to have, you know, get everybody to move to this side of the field and then try to sneak one in, but we stayed at home and made the tackle. Hey, and we got an email from Tyler Miller's Uncle Kevin and Aunt Paige as they're watching from South Carolina along with Kevin Porter. Or that is his Uncle Kevin Porter. So uh, thank you very much for watching. We hope you're enjoying the game. Tyler's having a great first half. Look to see more of him here in the second half. Cody's going to keep the run or keep the ball. He gets outside, cuts it back up. Brought down at the 20-yard line, so he's going to be close to the first down. Depending on the spot, it looks like from here he ought to have the first down. But uh, we'll see where they spot it there on the field. It is the first down as they're moving the chains. Once the chains are moved, the clock will start again. 33 seconds to go here in the first half. Nick Summers in the backfield with Cody Stevens. Cody rolling to his right this time, looking downfield. Tries to get free. Finally gets free. Still a pursuit and brought down from behind. Number 59, Nathan Algier. Algier, possibly, from Fredericktown. Great pursuit. He did not give up on the quarterback. Stayed with it and ultimately brought him down after a loss of about 10 yards. And with that, that's going to sound the horn. We're at the end of the first half. Dexter Bearcats on top of Fredericktown Blackcast, 28-0. to We're going to take a break. You're watching High School Football Live on YHC-TV. When you need home medical equipment, get a higher grade of home care with A-Plus Medical. At A-Plus Medical, our goal is to provide a wide selection of quality products and a higher grade of customer care. From grab bars to bedside commodes, canes, hospital beds, and wheelchairs, nebulizers, home oxygen, CPAP and supplies, plus much, much more. When you need a helping hand and want to breathe easier, put your trust in A-Plus Medical Equipment, a higher grade of home care. We know you have many choices in automobile dealerships, but at Glen Sane, our customers are special. We want you to understand that we're always working very hard to please our customers. We have a great selection to choose from, and with the 0% and the rebates and our prices at Glen Sane, it's a great time to buy. I'm Danny Ford, owner of Glen Sane. We want you to come see us, and God bless our troops. NFL Red Zone, the channel that brings you every touchdown from every game on Sunday afternoons. Watch the most exciting moments like never before, live in HD. Every touchdown from every game, live on one channel, NFL Red Zone. Welcome to NFL Total Access. The show that takes you inside the locker room and down on the field. With inside access to all 32 teams all year long. NFL Total Access, Monday through Saturday, only on NFL Network. NFL Network, where football season never ends. The Sports Roundtable represents one of our great traditions here in Southeast Missouri and Northeast Arkansas, and that's high school athletics. And nobody promotes it better than us here at YHC. What's new with the Roundtable this year, we're looking to add representatives from our local colleges, Southeast Missouri State, Arkansas State, and Three Rivers, to give us the inside scoop on local college athletics in our area. The Roundtable was designed to give local viewers in-depth analysis about teams and sports in our area, and we're geared up to go once again every Saturday morning, live at 10 a.m.
Welcome back. Again, halftime here, district championship. Tenth game of the season for the Dexter Bearcats and the uh, Fredericktown Black Cats. Dexter on top, 28-0 to at the half. There you can kind of see through the score. Pretty good crowd here in Dexter tonight considering uh, Cardinals are playing baseball in game six of the World Series. And a quick update on that is 3-2 to two, Texas, middle of the fourth. But uh, we'll try to keep you updated throughout the game of the – of the World Series game as well. I know we got a lot of people we know up in St. Louis tonight, Kevin. But real quick, let's uh, before uh, we see uh, lining up for the kickoff, and again remind you that Fredericktown will be receiving the ball. But some quick time stats here. Uh, first downs, uh, Dexter Bearcats doubled up there just about Fredericktown, lead 13 to 7 in that category. Um, Dexter 150 yards on the ground, Fredericktown 133. And passing, uh, looks like Dexter 267 and, or excuse me, that's total yards, 267. Yards passing 142 for the Bearcats, two yards for Fredericktown. So uh, Dexter leading in total yardage 267 to 130. So a big key, or the big number I think in the first half was turnovers. Uh, so we saw uh, four turnovers, no, that's four penalties, with three, two turnovers for the uh Three turnovers, excuse Three turnovers me, for, for Fredericktown, and one turnover for the Bearcats, and I believe the Bearcats capitalized with the score on all three of those turnovers. Yes. And also uh, defense, two big-time stops inside the 10-yard line by the Bearcats uh, once at there in the middle of the first quarter, and they're obviously at the end of the first half. So, But, Kevin, can you give us some individual highlights from that first half? Yeah, just some quick highlights there. We talked about it earlier in the – earlier in the game, but it was, it's a night of the quarterbacks on the ground. Uh, Jeremy, and correct me on that last name, Ed, uh, for Fredericktown, their quarterback. Griminger. Griminger. Jeremy Griminger, you know, netting 101 yards on the ground on 17 carries. And for the Bearcats, Cody Stevens running the ball nine times, netting 121 yards. Uh, for the Bearcats, four different Bearcats getting in the end zone. Cody Stevens Scoring a touchdown, Josh over Joe, Josh overall able to punch it in for a score. Alex Cliff and then Tyler Miller. And with Tyler, Tyler's also got four receptions for 109 yards there in the first half. So some impressive numbers by Cody and Tyler as well. And I believe uh, we saw there at your halftime looking at the season stats, that, that touchdown, that first touchdown, Tyler Miller was his 12th touchdown this year, or at least receiving. And I believe he has a couple of touchdowns last week. Uh, on the defensive side, the interceptions he returned. Yeah, and Tyler having a big night, um, you know, couldn't do that without Cody going through the air to him. You know, Cody also has six completions for 142 yards tonight with the one touchdown to Tyler. So, you know, K Cody able to put up right at, I guess, 275 or 263 yards on total yards on the night. Uh, just to jump over to defense real quick, Ed, before we get to the kickoff here. Zach Watson leading the Bearcats and leading all tacklers tonight with eight total tackles, seven of those being a solo tackles, and then also Joseph Lovins, Nick Summers, both on the board with four along with Jacob Lee. And for the uh, visiting Fredericktown Black Cats, uh, Nathan Algar. 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 Nathan Algar uh, leading Fredericktown with five tackles, four of those being solo followed by Tanner Ward and Jake Caracas with three tackles each. So the Bearcats just putting up some big stats in the first half, and, you know, that leads to the 28 nothing score. They were able to key on the turnovers by Fredericktown and not making many mistakes. Absolutely. You know, and their offense has just continued to improve there, being the Bearcats' offenses. We've seen them improve each and every week. And so, and again, they're, they're hitting on all cylinders this evening. 
Uh, we've had a few emails so far in the game uh, from across the country. Uh, Tyler Miller, he's got a great fan base. We uh, heard from his aunt and uncle. But also one of his dad let me know this morning that uh, his cousins, Ann and Lisa Wilson, are actually here in the stadium tonight from North Carolina. So they made a 1,400 mile or 1,400 miles round trip by the time they go back uh, just to see their cousin Tyler play in his final se final regular season game here at Turtles Bland Stadium. So, uh, but also appreciate Debbie Mark Stidham shooting us an email during the game. Debbie, appreciate that. And uh, so, uh, let us know what you think of the game. I talked with uh, my buddy Mike Pearson, who's on the coaching staff of Fredericktown. Uh, let them know the game. They'd be able to see it up in Fredericktown on the internet, yctv.com. And uh, so hopefully we're seeing, uh, have some spectators up there in the Fredericktown area, those who were not able to make the trip down to the game this evening. Yeah, we want to just give a shout out and a thanks to YHC. And Tyler does a, a great job. I mean, I wish we could have had this when I was in high school. I mean, just great quality. Um, able to follow all the Bearcats home games. Just outstanding for the fans and people all across the country able to log on to the internet and watch the games um, I've had family watch it in Arkansas I don't know if that's good or bad but um, nevertheless it's just outstanding coverage for a high school football team absolutely and it's a great thing that your family there in Arkansas is able to watch that game as well uh, last couple of years uh, my National Guard buddies from 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 Kansas, Tennessee, uh, down in Florida, up in Washington, have all been watching the game as well. Uh, some out in Virginia this year. So, uh, yeah, it, it's, it's just a great, great deal. Uh, thanks for what YAC TV does, but also New Wave Communications for everything they bring to uh, their service area and being able to provide a level of service such as this uh, for high school athletics. Uh, haven't got an update. Uh, Last update, St. Jim was leading uh, Park Hills. We'll try to get you more updates throughout this game. Also, uh, we heard early in the game or midway through the first half, uh, Farmington was on top, was leading uh, Sykeston. Sykeston 21 to seven. So we'll try to keep you abreast of the, some other district championships tonight uh, during the game. Also, we've got the World Series going in the iPad. And again, thanks to New Wave Communications providing a Wi-Fi hotspot here in the press box. So uh, bottom of the fourth, uh, we got two on, one out. It's David Freeze just feel, uh, fielder's choice putting a Matt Holliday on third and David Freeze on first, or excuse me, Lance Berkman to third. Holliday's out of second. Hey, but while we're getting ready to see the teams line up, tonight's kickoffs are brought to you by Rainey Mathis Funeral Homes in Dexter and Bernie. They're dedicated to providing services to the families of Southeast Missouri with care and compassion. They serve every family in our community with great pride. They're able to offer a wide range of services to meet your family's needs and customs. They will listen to you and your wishes to help plan a celebration consistent with your expectations. Rainy Mathis will take the time to plan every detail and help to relieve the burden on your family during your time of loss. Visit Rainy Mathis Funeral Homes online at rain, uh, excuse me at MathisFuneralHome.com. So both teams are lined up. Alex Cliff will be kicking for the Bearcats. Deep will have uh, just 21 Zach Proper and 24 Justin Sawyer retrieved by Justin Sawyer on the return. He's going to be brought down by Garrett Ray after a short return of about four or five yards. Garrett Ray throws him down at about the 20-yard line. So with that, uh, the Black Cats are going to take over on their own 20. It looks to be 25-yard line just inside, outside of it. And, Ed, uh, I just got an update. It's going to have to be a, congr a correction from earlier, but uh, heard during the half that Park Hills and St. Jim were tied 14-14. Okay. Um, I think the update we gave was a 15-7 score, but... So Grimminger with a good hard run, breaking tackle after tackle as he ran through the entire Bearcat line. And it finally brought down after a gain of about 13 and a first down. So Grimminger talked to coach at half. He's coming out fired up with a lot of energy and a lot of strength. And uh, he's, as he did in the first half, he carried his team, bringing them up and down the field. And so he's willing to pick up that challenge and continue to do so. Yeah, like we mentioned in the first half, Grimminger, you know, had 106 yards on the ground. Fredericktown as a team only had 133, so he's he's carrying them on the ground tonight. Let's 
There's the handoff to Zach Proffer. He charges through the line, gets a gain of about six, maybe seven. It's going to be just shy of the 50-yard line. Nick Summers able to make the tackle there, but it was after a big pickup. Looks like they picked up about six yards there on the carry. So second and four, again, just shy of the 50-yard line. Blitz by the Bearcats. He's met in the backfield, stood up, and brought down for a loss of about three. See where they spot the forward progress. It looks like they're going to spot him at about the 46, so a loss of three. Maybe they're going to give it to him 47. So bring up third and six. Chase No and Kenton Sanders able to meet him there at the line and make a good tackle. Where the marker is at, it looks like they lost a little bit, but it's still showing third and four here. Gramminger rolls to his right. He's looking downfield. Good coverage. Tipped. Intercepted by Gary Ray, or excuse me, Ryan Joyner. Ryan Joyner put a tip drill on himself there. Great concentration, leaping skill, and so just an overall great job there by Garrett Ray. Or excuse me again, I'm sorry, Ryan Joyner, forgive me there. But uh, so turnover number five, now four. The Black Cats and the Bearcats are going to take over with 10.07 to go here in the third quarter on their own 41-yard line. Ryan making a very athletic play there. He had to know that he was going to get hit, and he did get hit and still hung on to the ball. Cody under, under center. Hand off to Josh Overalls. He tries to get outside. He springs free. Tries to cut back, but he's brought down by number 48 for the Bearcats, or Black Cats. That's Jake Karokas. That's the biggest run of the night for Josh, and we've seen him have some big carries this year, but, you know, that Fredericktown team is well coached, and I'm sure they've keyed on that number 30 in practice. And uh, Lance, or excuse me, Yadier Molina just grounded out to first, but that scored Lance Berkman and moved David Freeze to second. So with two outs in the bottom of the fourth, game's tied three to three. And off to Nick Summers, he springs here to the front side. He's trying to turn that corner. He's brought down. Tackle by number 48, Karokas again. Looks like he's gonna have the forward progress stop Good enough for a first down, but it looked like there might be a face mask on this play. As there was a flag on the, it is a face, face mask, mask against the Black Cats. Face mask against the Black Cats. Yeah, just watching the play there, that looked like a, you know, just about in, incidental face mask. I don't think he was trying to do anything illegal there, just trying to make the tackle and unfortunately had yeah. his hand on the face mask. And it was just a five yarder. And so uh, it is first down, and now into uh, Black Cat territory. Lining up Bearcats to be on the 42-yard line of Fredericktown. First and ten. Cody rolls to his Tyler's right, wide looks open, deep. Going deep. As he throws deep, comes back. Tyler comes back for it. Looks like he's going to be incomplete, but a flag on the play. Cody was hit just as he threw that ball there. Wasn't able to get all of it on it. Tyler saw the ball going to be short, tried to come back, dove for it, but uh, contact with the ground. Ineligible receiver downfield on the Bearcats. So uh, Lyman got a little deep there, so they're going to march off a few yards. Brings up first and 15. Counts now two and one on Nick Pinto. Again with David Freeze on second base, two outs in the bottom of the fourth. 3-3. Three, three. Game six of the World Series. Cody Lowe to his right, got Josh overall out in front of him. Cody's gonna keep it. Goes right up through the flat into the secondary. Stiff arms, Patrick Klein. He's brought down inside the 10 or right at the 10 yard line. So about a 32-yard gain and a first down 
for the Bearcats. It's going to be first and goal at the 10-yard line. And that's going to be enough to put Cody over the 150 mark tonight in rushing yards. Cody uh, right at 2,500 total yards for the season. It is first and goal. Ball's on the nine. Nick Summers in the backfield. Nick's going to take the balls. He tries to get outside. Stiff arm. Run out of bounds at about the three, maybe the four. We'll see where they spot it. Inside the five, either way, will be second and goal from the four. Now the end of the fourth inning, tied three to three. Summers again in the lone back in the backfield. Cody will be under center. Fakes it, hands off inside to Alice Cliff. He's met at the line of scrimmage. Flag on the play. Cliff, the ball carrier, jumping flag on the play. See the call. Holding against the Bearcats. Holding against Looked the like Bearcats. that play was a busted play from the get go. Cody tried to do a good job of selling the pitch. Yeah. And um, when he came back down, but Black Cats weren't buying it. Yeah. And now we're going to have second and goal from the 14-yard line, we being the Bearcats. Ed, you mentioned Molina earlier. Actually took my, my four-year-old to his first Cardinal game this year, and he was fortunate enough to get Molina to pitch a ball to him on his way into the dugout. So I don't know if another game will ever be as special to him, but – when none are ever as special as the first as Cody tries to get away. Looks like we're going to have another hold, Ed. And he's brought down at number 62, Austin Smith, on the pursuit for the Black Cats. Holding again against the Bearcats. So Fredericktown making a nice defensive stand here. I know we've had a couple of penalties, but on both those penalties, they, they've stopped the Bearcats. So. Correct. They, they would have been great stance or great stops without the penalty. Then you just add the penalties on to it to make it that much even better. So Fredericktown declining this penalty to bring up third down and goal from the 25-yard uh, line. This being two-down territory here, we could see anything from the Bearcats, run or pass. So you got Summers and Overall in the backfield. Or excuse me, Chase Young. Now he'll go out. Pass across the middle. Jake Lee complete. He's down as he catches it. He's going to be down at about the seven-yard line. Bring up fourth and goal from the seven. So great reception there by Jake as he was well defended by Farmington, or excuse me, Fredericktown Blackcats. I, I got a National Guard unit, the 1138th in Engineer Sapper Company is in Farmington and Fredericktown. And, and so uh, for years I've been saying, you know, 1138th in Farmington and Fredericktown. So Fredericktown, please forgive me. I, I don't mean to do that. It's just a bad habit, and I'm getting a lot older than I used to be and not nearly as quick. It's going to be about fourth and go or from the seven, it looks like. Stevens looking, going up top. In the corner for Miller, off his fingertips. Tyler wanting to say maybe he was pushed a little bit, but uh, Tyler had a good chance at it as uh, he went up for it, had both hands on it, just not able to corral that one in. And we don't see him miss many that he uh, that he actually gets his hands on. Yeah, that was defended well by number 28 Roberts for the the Black Cats, and they're going to take over here on the seven yard line. So big time stop there for. Uh, Fredericktown, 7.17 to go here in the third quarter. Fredericktown really, a lot of, lot of football time left, and, and with, they've got an explosive offense, but at some point in time, going to need to take a look and get on the scoreboard before the clock starts yep. becoming their enemy as well. Nick Summers making the tackle there, but the Black Cats able to pick up at about six, six or seven.
Nick having a pretty big night defensively. That's going to put him at about six tackles for the night. Yep. Blitz on. That time the Bearcats snuff it out, so it's going to be a shorter no gain for uh, Griminger as he kept it himself, but it looks like maybe a gain of one, bring up third and three. At about the 14-yard uh, line, just shy of the 15-yard line. This is a big third third down for Fredericktown, needing to get on some points on the board, but also field position-wise. If you have to punt here, Dexter's going to have really good field position. Well, and, and Cody Nelson and Chase Young, such explosive return men also. And there, Grimminger's hit. This ball goes across the middle. Incomplete, as it was knocked away by D.J. Dowdy. Pass intended for Bryant Barks, who had a good chance at him. And D.J. just great, great defense closing in on the pass there. And Texas just scored again as a Young doubled to score Josh Hamilton. So now Texas leads four to three, no outs in the top of the fifth. Punt up, nice Cody punt. Nelton back. Ball's going to bounce and roll for Fredericktown as it's now inside the 45-yard line. Now Cody there pointing there, you know, letting the official know that the Black Cats had touched the ball before it started rolling, but the officials knew that. So Yes. So it is going to be spotted at the 45-yard line. Or no, they're going to bring it up to the 47-yard line. So first and 10 for the Bearcats with 5.54 to go here in the third quarter. Bearcats on top, 28 to nothing. Going back to that pass on third down, DJ Dowdy making a, a very athletic play on the ball. DJ only being a sophomore. Um, good chance we could see him play in the quarterback position next year with Cody graduating and DJ being the JV quarterback. Cody's going to run with it. Excellent cut by Cody there, but also a big hit by Jake. And another flag on the play. Face mask against the Black Cats. And we got another email. Hi, guys. I'm watching from my edit room at ESPN in Bristol, Connecticut. I'm a Kennett alum and enjoy watching the coverage of local sports and YEC TV. It's the only way I can keep up with all the teams I watched my entire life. You guys do a great job, and thanks for providing people like me with online coverage of all the local sports there in the area. I'll keep watching, but I might get busy here as I'll be editing the highlights of the World Series game for baseball tonight. I'd like to wish all the local teams the best of luck in the upcoming playoffs and hope to see some local teams playing at the Dome. Thanks again, and I look forward to watching more local sports on YHC TV, especially the Bloomfield Christmas Tournament. Thanks, Dustin Sullivan, Kennedy alum, my alma mater also. Hey, and Kevin, also an Arkansas State alum, yes. your college alma mater. Dustin, appreciate it. And uh, just keep, keep the emails coming. So pass complete to Cody Nelton and Cody scrambles. Brought down at about the 27-yard line, so about a 20-yard pass completion. First reception by Nelton on the night. So first and 10 now, inside the 30. 27-yard line of the Black Cats. Five and a half minutes to go here in the third quarter. Hand off to Josh Overall. He tries to get outside, cuts back, hurdles the defender. Met by uh, number 24, or 20, 28, Reed Roberts. And threw him for a tackle, but not until after he gains about six yards. So bringing up second and four. Reed Roberts there that you were just referencing to a freshman, Ed. So, I mean, we've been talking about how young this Fredericktown team is all night. For a freshman to make a play like that, you got to know they've got good things down the road. And we're starting to hear that that crowd over there. It's some yelling for the Bearcats, some yelling for the Black Cats. Cody looking to pass, goes across the middle, short. 
Jake Lee, as he was between covers. Hey, and Misty Kreider, go Bearcats. Nice job, Tyler Miller, from your cousin Brianna. Or Brianna. We are so proud. We love watching on the big screen. We are so happy to have the West webcam. Thank you, Uncle Josh and Aunt Misty and Erica and Brianna. So uh, sent from their iPad. And, hey, uh, we're out here in the – that's exactly how we're keeping up with the World Series from the iPad here in the press box. Thank you very much for the email. We're very happy to be able to bring these games and glad you're enjoying watching Tyler. Kevin, and I think I've told you too, Tyler's my neighbor. He lives right down the street from me. So uh, very good friends with Kevin and Tracy. Tyler's a fine young man. See him every Sunday. I'm in church. So uh, just great, great people to be around. So Cody like picking up some big short. yardage there, but – Man, he was met hard, <laughs> knocked out of bounds. Couldn't see who was ma who made that tackle, but big hit by the Black Cats. So it's going to be fourth and one officially, but it looks like it'll be less than a yard from the 18-yard uh, line. Need to get to the 17 or right at it. Alex Cliff in at fullback. Nick Summers in the tailback position. Cody's going to keep it. Goes right off the uh, left guard, spins around, and Gonna be good for the first down. Looks like as Nick Summers comes off the field, Josh Overall gonna bring in the play for the Bearcats. Now uh, top of the fifth, two outs. Young on third and Napoli on a uh, on first. Looks like. Sounds like Napoli's having another good night for Texas. Seems like you, he's been on base just about every time we've had an update. And we got uh, Murphy batting for Gentry. And so an uh, inside handoff there to us uh, overall for short yard gain. Draft Looks to be maybe a yard. I have now, to give the Black Cats uh, a pat on the back. They've done a fine job of keying on overall and Summers all night. And we know both these guys have made big plays all year long. So they've done a good job defensively Absolutely. against those two. Coach Pixley and uh, his quarterback, Cody Stevens, starting to use a little bit of clock management as we see the play clock starting to drip down inside five seconds on every snap now. That time snapping it as it expired. Across the middle, Chase Young, touchdown. Great catch by Chase. He was hit immediately, able to get his feet underneath him and get another yard after the catch for a touchdown. So with 3.24 to go, Bearcats on top now by five touchdowns. As we'll see Alex Cliff as the shoe, kicking shoes tossed in for him. And here on the replay, Chase Young goes high. And gets his feet underneath him, protects the ball, takes the hit into the end zone for the touchdown. Chase took a, a pretty good hit on that reception, so fine job by Chase hanging onto the ball. Ball down, kick is up, and it's good. So with 3.24 to go here in the third quarter, Dexter Bearcats now on top, 35-0. to zero. Want to remind everybody, Dexter Pizza Company is now under new ownership and have returned the classic recipes. A lunch buffet is available daily along with the popular cookie dough pizza. And now offering chicken wings. Dexter Pizza Company is offering a carryout special for Bearcat fans during each YHC televised game. It's free breadsticks with the purchase of a large pizza. Call 624-7499 to order or visit them on Business 60. Kevin also want to remind you on Sundays with the church present the church bulletin, you'll receive a free drink with your buffet. James Fowler now taking over ownership. Dexter Pizza has done a good job. We've mentioned it before by bringing back the, uh, what many consider the original recipe that Dexter Pizza had. So appreciate James being uh, a supporter of YHC and offering uh, those specials to the Dexter community. Well, the pitcher Lewis is now at bat after Murphy walks. So bases loaded two outs in the top of the fifth. Two strikes on the pitcher Lewis now. Alex Cliff with the kick, ball is up. Got a flag, Got a flag but Zach Proffer. And illegal procedure. 
So that'll back it up five more yards. They'll kick from the 35 yard instead of the 40. And uh, the Cardinals did get the pitcher out. So in the middle of the fifth, Texas on top, four to three. Coach Pixley talking to his team about the kickoff procedures here. Cliff again. Uh, Zach Proffer from the 15 comes up the sideline. He's broke free. Only one to catch him. Tackle by Alex Cliff, the kicker. Brought down at about the 41 at the 41 yard line of the Dexter Bearcats. So uh, 35 about a, almost about a 44 yard return by Zach Proffer showing his speed there on the return. And it's never good when your your kicker makes the the tackle. So you know it looked like he had one guy to beat and he would have scored. Hey, even if your kick tackle or your kicker is your starting fullback and middle linebacker. <laughs> But he's also the safety <laughs> on the kickoff. Griminger looking to the right. So it kind of falls short of the intended receiver, 48, Jake Karokas. Looks like Dexter's done a better job defensively of getting into the backfield this half. Not sure what Coach Pixley adjusted at halftime. I mean, we we played a good defensive game, but it looks like we're in the backfield a lot more this half. Absolutely, and we may see now with five scores and just over 10 minutes to play in the ball game that uh, Fredericktown may be relying a lot more on that pass and less on, on the quarterback running as they need to get the ball downfield. Pass complete to Karokas as he takes two steps back and he gets back to where he received the ball. So about a three yard gain, bringing up third and seven and the clock keeps ticking now. 1.45 to go here in the third quarter. Jacob Lee making a big hit there on the tackle. Quick pitch out to the flag. We've seen it several times this year. Justin Sawyer, the intended receiver, but uh, he knew he had the reception. He turned turned the head upfield before he had the ball in the hands. And, um, you know, that's just inexperience right there, Kevin. We talked about it. Guilty. Everybody out here has been guilty of it at some point in time. And uh, that, that's a, guy, a, a play they wish they could get over. Yeah, and he's a guy that will make big plays for them down the road, him only being a junior as well. So, Fourth and seven, going across the middle, incomplete. Off the fingertips there, Tyler Miller, but Tyler really had no intention of catching, I don't think, since it was so low, knowing that they were going to be turning the ball over on downs. If he catches that and falls on the ground, he just, in a sense, gave him a punt. So good heads-up play there by Tyler. So, Jay Gr John Jay just grounded out the second, so one out in the bottom of the fifth. Texas Rangers still lead four to three. And there's the whistle. So at the end of three, Bearcats on top, 35 to nothing. We're going to take a quick break. You're watching High School Football Live on YHC TV. Baker Implement Company in Malden, Missouri is your authorized dealer for Case IH tractors, combines, and implements. We are also an authorized dealer for Lexion combines. Baker Implement offers service on what we sell by factory trained technicians. We are also one of the best stocked hardware stores in the area. Baker Implement is the place to shop for Case IH branded apparel and toys. Drop by and visit us and let us show you what we have. You'll find whatever you're looking for at Baker Implement Company in Malden, Missouri. At Allen, Christian & Dexter, you'll like the way we do business for many reasons. We make the buying experience simple with a large selection of Buicks and GMCs to choose from. We offer quality pre-owned vehicles priced to fit any budget. No gimmicks, 
Guaranteed. Shop us any day, anytime here in Dexter or online at allenchristian.com. We service what we sell with one of the most experienced service departments in the Heartland area. Selection, price, experience, family owned for over 53 years. Allen Christian, Buick GMC, Dexter. And we're back as you see Theo Gall right there in the picture. And uh, so brings up first down for the uh, Bearcats. And we just got an update after three. Park Hill leads St. Jen 28 to 20. As we Josh Overall break free there and lose his footing, but not till after he gets the first down. He's down at the 49 yard line of the Bearcats. But again, uh, in our sister district to the north, Park Hill Central leading St. Genevieve 28 to 20 after three. Sounds like that game could go either way. And if the Bearcats are able to hold on for home field advantage, we could be seeing Park, or, Park Hills or St. Jen next week. Absolutely. We played both of them early. St. Jen we had here at home in week one, and Park Hills we went there in week two. Uh, Bearcats came out victorious both times. Uh, St. Genevieve, they've only lost once since they lost to Dexter in week one, and that was to John Burroughs, who's currently ranked sixth in class 3A in the state. So we got a timeout on the field, Dexter, and with that timeout, we're going to take a quick break. You're watching High School Football Live on YHC-TV. At First National Bank, it is about believing in our community, planning for the future, and understanding the needs and aspirations of our customers. We bring you the best in full-service banking, backed by a friendly staff and a strong sense of community pride. We encourage you to experience the First National Bank difference. First National Bank. Believing in community. Planning for the future. Hello, I'm Dr. Terry Swinger, and I'm so pleased that YHC-TV will be carrying so many sporting events this year, both boys and girls. These events help with leadership, uh, personality development, and I would like to wish all of our students and all of our schools a safe and successful year. And we're back, and those of you who did not click over at that time out to the Cardinal game, it's now after five, uh, Texas Rangers on top, four to three, Salas pitching for the Cardinals, as you see Nick Summers take the pitch out there as he turns the corner. He's brought down by number 21, Zach Proffer. Called his name a lot, but not until after Nick Summers gets a gain of six, bringing up second down and four. So we got some third quarter stats here uh, from our good friend Brett Dorton for the Bearcats. Cody Stevens rushing, still leads the rushing attack with 157 yards on the night. Uh, 192 yards through the air, led by Tyler Miller with 109 yards. And Chase Young second with 37, but Chase getting a 22-yard touchdown that quarter. Handoff there to uh, overall. He's met at the line of scrimmage. Going to be a loss of maybe one, bring up third and seven. Adam Blue, 55 for Fredericktown, making a, a good tackle right there, meeting overall right at the line. So 10 minutes to go here in the ball game. Bearcats on top, 35 to zero. Stevens rolls out, he's great penetration there by number 62, Austin Smith. Tripping Cody up in the backfield after a loss of about four, bring up fourth and 11. So we see uh, Tyler Miller and the punting team coming on for the Bearcats. Be the second punt of the evening, I believe. Tyler's first punt good for about 43 yards, if I remember the stats yes. from halftime correct. Yeah, the Bex Bearcats have executed well on offense all night, so only having to punt twice. Another fine punt by Tyler. Justin Sawyer back, less the drop. It's going to be downed at the 18-yard uh, line. Hey, Christy Greer letting us know she's flipping back and forth between games. Thankfully, this Bearcat game isn't as stressful as the Cardinal game. Ed and Kevin, you guys are doing a great job. Uh, excuse me, an excellent job. So, uh, Bobby, Christy, thank you much. 
Um, hope my mom's listening tonight, but I forgot to tell her to turn it on Thursday, so she would have heard that. So, uh, <laughs> sweetie, if you're at home, call mom, tell her to turn on the ball game. <laughs> sweetie and Nate, they're across the way in the stands. My little guy loves these Bearcats. So first down, 10 from the 19-yard uh, line of the Black Cats. 8.20 to go here in the ballgame. Quick pitch into the flat by Grimager. Met instantly by Tyler Miller, so no gain on the play. A good reception there by uh, number 24, Justin Sawyer. Tyler, you know, we talked about him exploding offensively tonight. But that's also three tackles on the night for him, and you know, we've seen him break up a couple of passes, so having a good overall game tonight. Absolutely. Coming off a game last week where he had four interceptions, two of them returned for a touchdown against New Madrid County. This time we're going to see him roll to the – throws it mid-stride. Ball comes up short, attended again for uh, Justin Sawyer, but great pursuit there by uh, – Garrett Ray, who was all over that pass. Had it been up, Garrett may have been in position for a pick six. Yeah, Garrett almost made a big play there, diving for the catch. Just couldn't get the ball in. So it's going to bring up third and ten here for the Black Cats, Ed. Hey, and uh, from their 4A district championship, Farmington now leading Sykes to 48 to 14. Ball in the air, overthrown, out of bounds. Pass intended for number 21, Zach Proffer. A little surprised by that Farmington Sykeston score. You know, we had Sykeston over here, and we know how good of a football team Sykeston is. So. Farmington ranked number, I think, eight yes. in class 4A. So, uh, again, also an excellent and you know, a very good Cape Girardeau team. Farmington went into Cape Girardeau and played very, very well and had an impressive win, uh, kind of a lopsided win. So Farmington, extremely good football team this year. And, you know, and they've kind of played second fiddle to Sykes in the last two or three years. So they're I'm sure they're excited about playing well tonight. Punts off. Cody Nelton back. He lets it dip or drop. And ball's going to be down at the Bearcat 47. I would expect that we'll see the Bearcats coming out running the ball here. Hey, Kevin, winning on the football field doesn't happen by accident. Players and coaches work throughout the long summer, conditioning for the rigors of competition. Practice upon practice, the lessons learned by our Dexter student athletes will, however, serve them well for a lifetime. Lessons of discipline and teamwork, hard work and commitment to excellence. At Bank of Advance, we believe in in the character that sports helped to build and we're proud to help support athletes on the field and in the classrooms. Bank of Advance, where a handshake still matters, member FDIC and equal housing lender. First and 10, Cody back to pass, lets the rush pursue, gets out of it, tries to free <laughs> it. Gets a couple yards to get underneath, get his feet underneath him, can't do it, and it falls for a loss of about five yards, or excuse me, about six yards. They also, Kevin, right now at Pizza Hut in Dexter, get any pizza, any size, any toppings for only $10 when you place a carryout order. A huge individual, or a $5 pizzone, that's a huge individual calzone stuff with your favorite toppings and cheese for only $5. Choose from meaty, pepperoni, or supreme. They're open till midnight Fridays and Saturdays and open 11 a.m. each day. Give them a call, 624-5333. Hand off to Nick Summers. He bounces outside, one to break, gets three. Turns up field, still going to be short of the original line of scrimmage after a gain of about three. Fredericktown really doing a nice job of pursuing the ball there, you know, getting Nick out of bounds. Well, it looks like he might not have went out of bounds. Clock still running. Kevin, we said it before, but On The Go Convenience has two locations, Dexter and Bloomfield, serving fried chicken and barbecue daily along with their popular food bar. It's also your one stop for fuel snacks and cold drinks On The Go and featuring the 28 degree cave. That's On The Go Convenience. Here we go, clock now under four minutes. Cody's gonna keep it, turns the corner, breaks through, 
Brought down at about the 45-yard line of the Black Cats, so he's going to be about two yards, two yards shy of a first down. It's Sawyer with the arm tackle. So uh, now three and a half minutes to go. Hand off to Alice Cliff, fullback. He's met at about the first down marker. See where the spot is, because he's going to be awful close, Kevin. This may be one that they, they might bring out the chains to measure. And it looks like from here he's going to have it. And there's, they're going to whistle it short. You know, if you take a nice look at the field tonight, you should be impressed that it's in great condition thanks to turf renovations. Turf Renovations is responsible for outstanding field services on not only this field, but numerous ones in the area, such as Portageville, Sykeston, Pickett, and, other, and area baseball fields as well. Turf Renovation prides themselves on providing the best playing surface possible for the area's athletes. Special thanks to Turf Renovations, and to check out their projects, go to turfrenovations.com. And it is short, so uh, be a turnover on downs. Fredericktown to take the field, first and 10 from the Fredericktown 43-yard line. Under three minutes to go now here in the ball game. And in the middle of the sixth, Texas still leads St. Louis four to three. Pass completer, number 48, Crocus, but he's met their short game. Joiner doing a good job of making an open field tackle there. Kept him in bounds, it looks as well. And so uh, once they get the ball spotted, clock should continue. Now at uh, less than 2:20 to go, 2:15 to go here in the ball game. So it's uh, safe to say Bearcats going to go home with a victory, finish the regular season out at 9-1 uh, against a very good Fredericktown team tonight who uh, has kind of rolled through district play coming into tonight's game. So uh, an impressive win by the Bearcats, but uh, I think these uh, farming or Fredericktown, they, they got a chance to play some good ball next Wednesday as they'll either be at uh, St. Jen or Park Hills Central, and they beat Park Hills Central earlier in the year and lost uh, to St. Genevieve. But uh, so we could very well be seeing these Fredericktown uh, Black Cats in a couple of weeks on Monday night. So a uh, loss there, so brings up third down and 10. Now a minute and a half to go here in the ball game. So congratulations, Coach Pixley and these senior, this senior class on an outstanding senior season. Again, get to finish nine and one in the regular season. This back-to-back -back district champs, and um, they'll be playing football next Wednesday here in Dexter. I'd like to remind everyone out there listening too, Ed, that the, the Bearcat Booster Club will have district champ shirts for sale in the first part of this next week. So try to get a hold of a Booster Club member and pick you up one of those shirts. You bet. You bet. We got a flag on the play. <laughs> it's kind of in the spot where it might be a holding call, but we'll see here in just a second. As they stop the clock to call it a personal foul against Dexter. So uh, disregard the holding comment. Uh, Bearcats there with personal foul. So that should result in a first down for the Black Cats. The one out in the bottom of the sixth. Van Berkman up the bat. Berkman already with a home run in the tonight. If I remember right, Ed. Home run and a single, I believe. No, excuse me. He's one for two. Two runs. And, oh, so he has walked. Walked. And uh, two, two runs, two RBIs. Home run, as you said, Kev. Grimminger going to keep it. Breaks out into the flat. Dives forward. So he's going to have a gain of about seven, maybe eight yards. We'll look at the spot. Now 40 seconds to go here in the ball game. Grimminger hurrying, trying to get one more play called. 
and this may very well be the last play of the ball game. But again, both these teams will make the playoffs. They'll be playing again Wednesday night. And, uh, Fredericktown will be on the road to either Park Hills Central or St. Genevieve. And the Dexter Bearcats will be right here at Charles Bland Stadium. So a first down there on the run by the Black Cats. Clock stops for a second to set the chains. Timeout now by Fredericktown. We'll just keep it right here, Kevin. Again, 17 seconds to go. Like you said, Ed, Frederick got a very good football team tonight. Um, you know, I look for them to do big things in the next couple of weeks. You know, the Bearcats played a really solid football game tonight. So, you know, don't want to take anything away from the Bearcats, but, you know, Frederick Town had some turnovers. So, you know, we, we know they'll get back to practice this week, straighten some things out, and be ready for the playoffs next Wednesday. Absolutely. Absolutely. Join us live Wednesday for the game. Oh, yeah, we'll be broadcasting live Wednesday. So join us on YAC, 7 o'clock, I believe. So with 3.51 in the ball game, left to go in the ball game at St. Genevieve, Park Hills and St. Genevieve tie 28-28. And there's a pass. Knocked away, almost intercepted by Cody Neldon. Uh, incomplete. Had it been caught by Fredertown, it would have been a touchdown. But with that and the mercy rule, the clock kept running. So uh, that's the ball game. Your district champs, your Dexter Bearcats, finish the regular season at 9-1, and they'll host the playoff game Wednesday night. It will be shown live here on YHC-TV. So uh, listen in at noon and also turn over to Channel 21 on y or New Wave Cable uh, to see the broadcast time. Should be right about 7 o'clock, 7.05, so we'll be on the air about 15 minutes early, 6.45 or so. Congratulations, Dexter Bearcats. Congratulations uh, also to the Fredericktown Black Cats as they're going to finish runner-up in district, so that guarantees them a playoff spot Wednesday night also. We just don't know just where. And again, we had just heard moments ago with 3.52 to go in the ball game, St. Genevieve and Park Hills Central are tied. So uh, with that there, you see the, the players shaking hands and they're saying congratulations. They both know they're playing Wednesday night. Uh, we're going to take a quick break. You're watching High School Football Live on YEC TV. People come from everywhere to get their deal from Lincoln Lacey. They come from Pitt, Bluefield, Orrin, from New Madrid, Bertrand, Campbell, Parma, Kelso, Liverport, Hitchville, Risco, Bernie. Lincoln Lacey is your domestic auto needs headquarters. From Rector, Arkansas, Gideon, Sykes, Head in Arkansas, Morehouse, Dexter, Minor, East Prairie, Charleston, Chappie, Holland, Arkansas. Come on out to Lincoln Lacey in Malden. First Midwest Bank Gold Club offers special privileges for our friends who are aged 50 or better and have combined deposits of $5,000. Members enjoy trips, cruises, seminars, and picnics along with free personalized bank services. Upcoming trips include Journey Through the Holy Land, Yellowstone in Winter, Classic Ireland, and Hawaiian Paradise Cruise. Stop by any First Midwest Bank location to sign up for the Gold Club. It's absolutely free. First Midwest Bank, providing common sense financial solutions every day. When you need home medical equipment, get a higher grade of home care with A Plus Medical. At A Plus Medical, our goal is to provide a wide selection of quality products and a higher grade of customer care. From grab bars to bedside commodes, canes, hospital beds, and wheelchairs, nebulizers, home oxygen, CPAP, and supplies, plus much, much more. When you need a helping hand and want to breathe easier, put your trust in A-plus medical equipment, a higher grade of home care. I'm Danny Ford, owner of Glenn Sane. We realize the best advertising we have is when our customers tell them about their buying experience at Glenn Sane, with price and service. We have an outstanding service and parts department that I think you'll be very, very proud of. Every day we come to work and look forward to selling our next GMC truck and have been doing so ever since my late grandfather, Glenn Sane, started the business in 1954. We invite you to come and see us and see why so many are buying from us. And God bless our troops. The Sports Roundtable represents one of our great traditions here in Southeast Missouri and Northeast Arkansas. 
and that's high school athletics. And nobody promotes it better than us here at YHC. What's new with the round table this year, we're looking to add representatives from our local colleges, Southeast Missouri State, Arkansas State, and Three Rivers, to give us the inside scoop on local college athletics in our area. The round table was designed to give local viewers in-depth analysis about teams and sports in our area, and we're geared up to go once again every Saturday morning, live at 10 a.m. Hey, and we're back. Again, uh, congratulations, Dexter Bearcats, on an impressive victory tonight against a very, very talented, very good Fredericktown Black Cat team. Also, uh, congrats to Fredericktown as they uh, run up in districts. They'll be playing next Wednesday night on the road, either in uh, St. Genevieve or Park Hills Central, and uh, the uh, winner of that team, or the loser of that game, will be coming here to Dexter Wednesday night. But Dexter Bearcats, back-to-back -back district championships with an impressive 35-0 win tonight. Um, real quick, looking at some of the team stats, uh, if you look at first down, Dexter Bearcats offense getting it done like they have been all year. 21st down to Fredericktown's 10. When you look at uh, rushing, uh, Dexter 252 yards on the game, 182 for the Fredericktown Black Cats. Well, when you look at net rushing, excuse me there, 204 for the Bearcats, 173 for Fr Fredericktown. And then uh, passing yards. Uh, Dexter, 192, only eight yards for Fredericktown. So total offense, 396 yards, just under 400 yards for the Bearcats, 181 yards for Fredericktown. Four turnovers tonight for Fredericktown, one turnover for the Bearcats, and I think that made the biggest biggest difference yeah. in the first half. Uh, a couple of turnovers early in the game that Dexter was able to capitalize on, got out to a quick lead of a couple of touchdowns, had the big stop inside the 10, Turned the ball over on downs. Fredericktown did, and then uh, late in the game or late in the second quarter, uh, another big stop by the Bearcat defense. So, uh, you got some individual highlights for us there, Kevin? We do here, Ed. Um, and just like you said, Dexter executed well tonight. Didn't make many mistakes uh, on the on the ground rushing. Cody Stevens ended up with a net of 157 yards. We know he took a few sacks there. Outside of that loss, he had 191 yards, but. You know, loses 34 on the few sacks that he had. Um, Josh overall with 31 yards. Um, he and Cody both with a touchdown each. Cody also passing for 192 yards through the air with two touchdowns. Uh, Tyler Miller being on the receiving end of one of those. Tyler having four receptions tonight for 100 yards with a long of 40. And Chase Young getting the under, other receiving touchdown. Two receptions for 37 yards. And, you know, Tyler also just... Overall tonight, great game. Two punts with an average of 43 yards each, which is outstanding for a high school punter. Jumping over to defense, um, for the Fredericktown Black Cats, uh, Nathan Allgaier leading with uh, eight tackles, seven of those being solo. Jake Caracas also seven solo tackles. For the Bearcats, Zach Watson leading all tacklers with ten total tackles, eight of them being solo, two of them assisted followed up by Nick Summers and then just a slew of Bearcats with six tackles. Um, so good night by uh, the Bearcats, both defensive, offensively. Just like I said, they executed well, didn't make many mistakes. So, you know, big win. Congratulations to Coach Pixley and the Bearcats on consecutive district championships. Absolutely. And, again, uh, we want to thank everybody for watching. Thanks for the emails. want to remind you, we'll be live Wednesday night here from Charles Bland Stadium as uh, the Dexter Bearcats will be taking on the uh, runner-up of the other district. And, again, with 3.52 to go in the ball game, St. Genevieve tied that ball game up 28-28. We've not had an update in the last couple of minutes of that game, though. So uh, but hopefully we'll know here real soon. So St. Gen just scored a touchdown. Our stats guy, Brett Dorton, just gave us with a minute left. So it's looking like St. Gen right now is going to come out victorious and be that district champ. So we'll be seeing, if it holds true the way it is now, we'll be seeing Park Hill Central here Wednesday night in Charles Bland Stadium. So a rematch there of week two yep. uh, of our season. So, again, congratulations, Dexter Bearcats. Congratulations, Fredericktown Black Cats on a great season. Best of luck to you next Wednesday night as well in, in St. Genevieve. And um, with that, we're going to be live Wednesday night. We want to say thanks for watching, and that's all we got this evening. Yeah. Be safe, be careful, and uh, have a great weekend. It's High School Football Live on YHC TV. Go Cards.